everyone and welcome to Cricket World TV. I'm Jim White, with me John Pennington. John, thanks again for joining us today. Not a problem, Jim. Um, we've got quite a lot to talk about here because the main thing is that England have lost badly <laughs> in this test and it's now one all in the ashes. Yeah, I mean we were due to be doing some ashes commentary today. It hasn't happened, obviously we're sitting here in front of the camera because yesterday you, were, you saw some of the game, didn't you Jim? I was watching all of it here in our studios and it was very disappointing. England going down by an innings of 80 runs, one all heading to the Oval. Which I guess if you want a tight series we've now got it, but from an England perspective not really where, where they want it to be. There's so much talk in cricket these days about momentum. Whether you believe it in, believe in it or not, Australia can say, well look, we've, we've bounced back from obviously losing at Lords, we've played well at the end of edge bass, and we then carried that over, played superbly throughout the two and a half days that it just about stretched to, uh, to heading there. We're now on top in England are, are having to come back from sort of where perhaps lower than where Australia came back from the Lords. OK, well, let's look in more detail at, at the game, as sort of a, as a resume, if you like, of, of the match. I've got to my, my score sheet in front of me here, but just summarise for us uh, the, the, the innings of the games and, and where, at the end, we can sort of discuss how we think it, it kind of went all Australia's way. Well, first, first innings, England won the toss. There was all sorts of, you might sort of say, panic before the game. Obviously, Flintoff was ruled out. Pryor hurt his back in the warm up. They weren't sure if he was going to play. Collingwood was going to take the gloves. In the end, they decided to place Flintoff with Harmison. Strauss went out, won the toss, and went out to bat, thought, right, right decision. And then uh, Blink and he missed it. It was all over very, very quickly. England all out for 102. Peter Siddle doing the damage. He got rid of Strauss, a young, brilliant catch by Marcus North at slip. He picked up five for 21. Stuart Clark, of course, we haven't talked about the Australia changes. He came into the side in place of Nathan Horitz. So no spinner for Australia. And they also brought back Brad Haddon in, play, in place of Graham Manu. He, uh, Clark took 3 for 18, England all out for 102, 34.5 overs I think it was. Australia bowled the Rovers quicker, they could have bowled them out before lunch. So that really was uh, a bit of a shot of the system, wickets falling like 9 pins and uh, uh, really it, England had to go out and do with the ball what Australia had done and what they hadn't done with the bat. And they didn't. Perform. They just performed. It was some of the worst bowling in test match cricket I can remember seeing. I mean how Australia only got 445, only, only they will know, because there was a period on Saturday morning where Stuart Broad, I mean, he, he then went on to pick up 6 for 91, best figures in any cricket, amazingly, he was just bowling so wide outside of off stump, it was, we're not, we can't get you out, we're just going to waste some time, so it, was, it was really poor, but so they did hit back England, they did manage to bowl Australia uh, for 445, Marcus North, brilliant 100, 110, Michael Clark rode his luck to get 93, Ricky Ponting came out after, well, it was after lunch on the set on the first day and just played almost the one day innings, just smashed the ball to all parts. Shane Watson helped him as well, he hit 51, he's been brilliant at the top of the order. Eventually they were bowled out for 445 and they asked England to, or well, effectively back for three days. I mean it was an amazing start wasn't it, you know, the, the tone of the game, it was the tone, the first ball, first boundary, I think the first three balls went for, the first two definitely went for, Shane Watson really was on form and looking as though as you said, one day opener, but actually keep mm. going in tests Talking and about, a great run of form. We talked so much about setting the tone, of course, first ball of the game, Hill from Alston Strauss, hooping in swinger, should have been out, LBW, wasn't given, England's first sort of 10 minutes of the ball, absolute rubbish, and although they did get Katic earlier, the Watson and Ponding just uh, feasted and they really should have gone on and got hundreds. So 4.45 then, so England are now already 343 behind and uh, had to, first of all, going back to, first of all, save the game. Yep. Um, no real chance of winning it by giving Australia a score? No, I mean, obviously Headingley has its uh, Ashes history, remember in 1981. It would have needed something of that ilk, and, but it wasn't going to happen. I mean, there's, there's been no doubt. But to be honest, things started quite well. They came out, Strauss and Cook played solidly, got to 58, and then it just collapsed. Similar to the first things, but almost worse because they from there they went to 86 for 8, this is on the second morning. They closed I think on the 72 for 5 with uh, Pryor there. Pryor played quite nicely for 22 and uh, it was all looking all over before Grand Saul and Stuart Broad came together and uh, smashed 175 or 6 balls. A bit of confusion with Billy Bowden was uh, making up some signals. Right. So there was wide or some buys in there. But uh, 100 in about 75 deliveries. Swan played really nicely for 62. Broad rode his luck a little bit played well enough, aggressive, hit Stuart Clark for four fours. 
in one over made 61, but uh, it was only merely delaying the inevitable. And Mitchell Johnson found his form in this match. He took five for 69 to wrap it up, bowling Graham Onions to complete the, the match. And Ben Hilfenhaus, Cricket World Player of the Week, picked up four for 60, his best ever figures in tests. Yeah, Hilfenhaus has been, I think, really, the, and quite rightly so, the top performer consistently. Johnson's, we, we've almost played him, bowled him back into form. Um, but the, the worrying thing there, of course, is England's middle order. You know, the four, 11 runs between four players. Yes, Jimmy Anson was there. Um, and it wasn't until sort of the free flowing Swan and Broad show again um, gave England something to cheer about, but major worries ahead of the, uh, the, last, the last test. Because they have to win it for the first to get the Ashes back. It was not until Saturday afternoon the crowd actually really got behind England and was enjoying watching England play. I mean, it really was amazing to see that. I mean, it, there was a lot of talk before the game about the booing for Ponting and the acid of the crowd towards, and I think to towards the teams, uh, particularly towards against Australia. And of course, they, they did the best thing they could do, and that silenced the crowd by first of all bowling in and out cheaply, and then piling on a shed full of runs. Yeah, of course. So there's been a lot of nonsense spoke about this. this sp spoken about the booing doesn't affect the players one job. They're professional sports person. They they are able to get into their bubble. That's why they're there. But uh, yeah, we don't want to see it. But they, they don't mind. They, get, they, they always expect it because they are Australian and against England. They, you're not going to get a, a standing ovation when you walk to the crease. Peter's not going to get a standing ovation when he goes to bat at Australia, is he? Um, no, South Africa. South Africa. It's already something part worse. But, uh, <laughs> well, he didn't, did he? The first time he played. Well, indeed. So that's that's part of the game. You know, that's take any sport. You think it's going to happen. I say. So going forward, then we've we've got uh, one all in the series. England have to win. Australia only only need to draw. Not that they're trying to draw. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Team changed their head. Obviously, um, uh, it's almost a crisis point for England because they have played badly throughout the series, and, and I think the shortcomings now really are being exposed with Flintoff's whole injury. I don't know what you call it. Debacle? Debacle, yes, facade, <laughs> whatever it is. The show that's taking over uh, the important thing here, which is trying to win the Ashes back. It is, and there's obviously, he's, I don't think he's come out and said his agent hasn't even said, oh, actually he was fit. But, okay, but would he have been fit in two days? You, you can't, it's all ifs and buts. They've got to be very firm and say, you have to prove you're fit. But in a way, they want him to say, look, we need to win, get him in. Because yeah. he is England's best bowler. Will Papara play? I don't think he will. Just to hearing Jeff Miller and Andy Flower saying they're not sort of bigging him up and saying he, he's he's got to be given a run, given a run, which then opens up the possibility of a Rambrakesh or a Key. Or a Daniel Rambrakesh back to go on, isn't it? Home ground now, well, the and he's scoring a hat full of runs. There's a lot of talk, and uh, okay, not, you know, even Jeff Miller's been talking about Rambrakesh, hasn't he? So he just sort of. He's in, he's in their thoughts, clearly. And the others in contention, you said Rob Key. Uh, Jonathan Trott, so Jonathan again, Trott. he was called up for this test, didn't play. I mean, let's not rule out both Papara and Bell being dropped, because that's the middle order that... Yeah. Bell, Papara, Bell, Collin, with 16 runs in a match. Yeah, I mean, that's just not enough. You might as well not yeah. have a middle order. Another one's in there that could play Carberry. Carberry, another century. And Triscothic, if he could be convinced maybe to come out for one game. Well, if, if he comes down, then I reckon they'll play Warning. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. There's one for the bookies. <laughs> or McGrath. Or McGrath. Well, in the country. Uh, well, it probably is somewhere. Hayden's about as well, isn't he? Yes, laughing <laughs> from the commentary box. Okay, well, it's a lot to look, lot to look forward to. Uh, thank you very much, John. And um, yeah, so Thursday will start at the Oval. And um, well, yeah, next Thursday. Next, next Thursday, so a week off and uh, uh, a few days off, should I say? Very confusing with all this cricket. We've early finish. We're not, not too sure where we are. But uh, anyway, so looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully you'll be joining us then on Cricket World TV.